nice game. So Kentucky suspended some useful guys. And welcome back. Pregame.tv, Ken Thompson, Dave Koken, NFL time. Did a couple college videos, and now it's time to take a look at the NFL. And, Dave, the uh, NFL, some of these teams that have been great in mm. the past, New Orleans, New England. I mean, what are the odds of those two offenses from years past being shut out Sunday night, Monday night at halftime? Crazy, isn't it? And uh, the Patriots on Monday were, uh, uh, if you're a New Englander, that was a tough night. <laughs> It was. I mean, Kansas City, I had KC, but I never expected well, I, I had an opinion on the Chiefs. I didn't, I, it wasn't a strong, I gave it out as a free play on pregame.com. It, it was not a strong opinion for me, um, but at least it was the right opinion. I will say this. I got a lot of respect for Tom Brady. I mean, he answers the questions oh, hey, and just yeah. says, hey, we're just not very good right now. I think it's a continuation of the problems at Michigan. There you go. It spread the, it spread oh, the guys who haven't even been Brady there for a while. Oak. We were talking about, <laughs> See? we were joking about that, yeah. yes. All right, uh, Baltimore, a nice route of Carolina. Everything fell Ooh. right for him. And Steve Smith going Boy. against his old mates. Everything fell right for him. The well, deflected pass and two touchdowns, big game. I would say that uh, anybody who had Steve Smith on their fantasy I team did. last yes. week, really? Yes. I, I, uh, I don't have a fantasy football team. I, I, don't, I, I like fantasy baseball. Don't play fantasy football. I don't like it. Yeah, that was my... Uh, that was what, that helped me get a W, so I'll take it. And uh, it's unbelievable because I had to hold Brady under 18 points on the Monday <laughs> night game. I never thought I'd do it, and I was able to. With do no it. sweat. Yeah, it was unbelievable. So. Good thing you didn't have to sweat the backup, though. Yeah, Jimmy G. Oh yeah, Jimmy G. You, coming in off the Eastern bench, looking Illinois, pretty good. You got Romo. Hey. Now you got Garoppolo. A couple Eastern yeah. Illinois boys. You think there's a quarterback? No, I don't think there's a quarterback controversy. No, not, not yet. Not yet. No. All right, Baltimore Ravens, <laughs> Indianapolis Colts. Baltimore, a team that lost Dennis Pitta, but. Uh, yeah. You know, still they've they've got Flacco, and when he's on, he's okay. The defense, though, only four sacks so far, Dave. Well, I, I think the Ravens. Uh, we saw signs of this last year. Uh, well, they, they, they're a decent football team. I think John Harbaugh does a nice job. Uh, they've got a solid tradition there. It's a good organization, and so they're able to still be a, a pretty decent football team. But and I think that's all they are now. I don't think they're really any better than that. So what what it means is. They're probably going to be good enough to handle the teams they're supposed to handle, but I don't know that they're going to be able to step up and beat the better teams in the league at this point. They're, you know, if you're, if you're doing a, uh, a ranking of all the NFL teams, Colts are probably, what, low teens? I think that's reasonable. I, I, wouldn't, I don't think they're much better than that, and they're certainly not much worse than that. So, you know, they're going to win eight or nine games, but when they have to step out on the road against teams that are better than they are, uh, I, I don't know that the material's there for them to, to win. The other team's going to have to help them along, so to speak. The Ravens you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. What about your take on Indianapolis? No, I think Indianapolis, look, you've got a guy, and it's just let him, cut him loose. Right. Okay. Yeah, uh, Luck is, he is great. I, this is, he's going to be the best quarterback in the NFL. But, that I don't have, I have no doubts about that whatsoever. I don't see anything. You feel good. I don't see anything on the horizon that's coming up. That's as good as luck. Uh, Mariota is a nice prospect, and maybe, and he's, but he's going to have a, a pretty steep learning curve in the NFL. Um, uh, Winston, I don't put in that class. Uh, so you know, this this guy, and he's better than any of the other young quarterbacks out there. This is going to be the next great quarterback in the NFL. Well, you got to do what you, what you did with Peyton Manning when he was there. He's got a couple of years' experience now under his belt. Let him go. Just give him the ball and say it's yours. And I think Pep Hamilton starting to figure that out now after that game a few weeks ago where he basically cost them the game with some really bad play calling. And I, I think they're putting more things in the hands of Andrew Luck now and saying, you're in charge. We'll give you some guidance, but this is your baby. Uh, was it Tom Moore? Tom was on the Brady. sidelines with Peyton Arizona. Right. And Tom Moore, Tom Moore really didn't coordinate the offense. He, uh, he, he acted as a guide Peyton Manning. for Peyton Manning. Right. Peyton Manning ran the offense. It's time for that to take place in Indianapolis, where Pep Hamilton is there to help Andrew Luck along, but Andrew Luck runs the offense. Good call. All right, this is my free play. Going to go ahead, going to make it official. A lot of respect for Baltimore, and again, the Ray Rice thing a little bit removed now, but still, uh, it is there, but all those jerseys turned in, and again, a nice bounce back by Baltimore, taking care of business at home in a big way against Carolina, and Steve Smith, of course, a monster game, but still the loss of Dennis Pitta, I think, will take its toll throughout the season. He was a gamer, and he was one of Flacco's favorite targets. Uh, four set and Talaferro out of the backfield doesn't scare me if I'm Indianapolis. The Colts' defense is not great, but they do play better at home. They do miss LaRon Landry, and that was a big loss in the second 
secondary. That's where they're, we they're, they're the weakest. Uh, that's their uh, Achilles heel, so to speak. They started off that Sunday night game in Denver, and then, Dave, the game that he referred to, the Monday night debacle against Philadelphia, when they don't kick the field goal, could have gone up 10 with five minutes to go. They end up losing that game to the Eagles. But they bounce back, be it against Jacksonville on the road and at home against Tennessee, two lesser offensive teams. But they took care of business, and they did let uh, you know Andrew Luck go crazy there and, and basically call his plays and get things together. And he you know delivered with eight touchdown passes. He was key. Reggie Wayne stepping up with his first big game since coming off the knee injury. T.Y. Hilton back in, in the groove. And then a couple tight ends with Allen and Fleener. These guys are good. And those, you'll see a couple double tight end sets for the Colts when they get inside the red zone. Uh, Richardson has not been great, but he's been a lot better than he was coming in halfway through the season. And Ahmad Bradshaw, one of the better receivers out of the backfield. He's been solid. Four touchdowns receiving. And he's still got a lot of uh, giddy up left as, as far as a veteran. So he helps them on the offense as well. For Baltimore, uh, for Baltimore uh, again, it's a team that's going to have to get off the schneid and uh, basically take a lead if they want to win this ball game. Their defense, they don't have the same names that they've had in the past. Suggs just a half a sack. Uh, Doomerville has three and a half sacks, and that's it. That's all they have as a team. Four sacks in the first four games. Mosley actually leads them as far as in tackles. I think it'll be a close game for a while, but I think the Colts open it up in the third, fourth quarter. I think the Colts win this game by double digits. Going to take Indy to go over 500, make it three in a row. Look for Baltimore to uh, set back. And again, Dave and I talked earlier, I think we both had Cincinnati at the beginning of the year to take care of business in the AFC North, and I think Cincinnati is a team that can start opening things up there, especially if Baltimore loses this game. So that's my play. Take the Colts, lay the three and a half. If you can buy the hook down, great. If you can't, no big deal. I think the Colts do win it by double digits. Dave, your take. I, I, I am, you know, look, I, I'm not a big favorite guy in the NFL, but uh, it doesn't mean I'm automatically going to look at the underdog and say, well, I got to make a case for them somehow. Uh, I, I don't think it's a good spot for Baltimore, uh, particularly with, you know, I, I think there could be a bit of a bounce off last week's uh, performance. That was They were really sharp last week. And I don't think they're that good a football team. I, I think that I mean, everything fell right for them last week, and I would look for a, a bit of a bounce there. So Colts would probably be the side I'd be looking at, too. There you go. All right, we'll finish things up with our fourth and final video. It'll be another NFL video. It'll be the Sunday night game. New England, can they rebound from that debacle in Kansas City on Monday night? We'll get Dave's take on that. Cincinnati's at New England, coming off a bye, the Bengals are. That's the Sunday night game, and we'll have it for you right here. Dave's opinion on pregame. TV.